Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create fire in Blender. This is the second video in the beginner's guide to simulation series where we're taking a look at every simulation that Blender has to offer, starting out with the fluid simulation and then this week we are working on the fire simulation. Before we jump into it, let's first understand what a fire and smoke simulation is. Fire and smoke is also known as gas simulations, and they are a subset of the fluid system in Blender. It can be used to simulate airborne solids, liquid particles, and gases. When simulating, it generates what we call voxels, and these voxels store all of the information that is used to render, such as heat, density, and velocity. With a low resolution and a high density value, you can actually see the individual voxels as you can see on screen. And the higher you set the resolution in the domain settings, the smaller these voxels become, which in turn makes the simulation look better, but then again, it's gonna take longer to bake. So with that said, let's jump into Blender and actually create the simulation. We're not gonna need the default cube, so go ahead and press X and delete it. And just like the liquid simulation, we're gonna need a flow object and a domain. And for our flow object, let's press Shift A and add in an icosphere. We're gonna set these subdivisions up to a level of three or four just to smooth it out a bit more. And then let's scale this down to around a one meter. So if you press N, you can see on the left side, let's set all of these to one. Then make sure you press Control A and apply the scale so that the scale numbers go back to one. This will come important later when we actually start to bake in the simulation. Now we need a domain object. And a quick and easy way to automatically add a domain is if you go over to object, down to quick effects, and then you can click on quick smoke. You can also do the same thing for liquid. But if we select quick smoke, it will automatically create a domain and a basic material for us. So for this domain, I'm gonna press G and Z and drag it up so that the sphere is closer to the bottom of the domain. And then make sure you press Ctrl A and apply the scale as well so that the scale numbers go to one. Now let's work on the settings. So first off, I'm going to select my flow object and head over to the physics panel. Here we can see all of the different settings and the first thing that we're gonna to want to change is the flow type. Currently it's on smoke and if we wanted to bring fire into the scene, we're gonna to need to switch it over to the fire mode. Now what happens is if we play the simulation, we are getting fire in our scene, but it doesn't look that great. So there's a couple of other settings that we need to change. Now, one thing to note is if you select fire and smoke, it's going to produce a smoke simulation and a fire simulation together, which results in way too much fire. Now, this could be useful for creating explosions if you want a lot of smoke and a lot of fire, but if we select fire, it will produce a little bit of smoke, but it's not gonna be as much. So if we play it, here we can see the result. So the first thing I'm going to change is the fuel option right here. The fuel controls the flame rate, and higher values will produce more chaotic flames, and then lower values will make the simulation uh, slow down a little bit. Since I want my simulation to be pretty crazy, let's go up to a value of 1.3. And for the surface emission value right here, we're going to set that down to 1. What this will do is it'll bring the fire closer to the surface of the mesh. As you can see here, there is a little bit of a gap, but now if we restart, you can see it's just a little bit shorter and with a higher resolution, it's gonna make it come even closer in. We don't really need any initial velocity because the flow object is not moving. If you have a flow object that's kind of moving around like this, initial velocity will have the smoke move with the flow object, resulting in a more natural look. What we will change is the texture. If we enable this texture, we can have a texture be applied to our flow object, and this determines where the fire is gonna be emitted. To see this actually work, let's jump over to the texture panel and then create a new texture. We're gonna switch the type over to clouds, and here we can see what our texture looks like. The white values means that there's gonna be fire emitted, and then the black values means that there's gonna be no fire. So first off, let's open up the color and bring the contrast up to a level of five. This will bring more definition in between the white and the black values. Now, if we go back over to the physics panel, we can select that texture in the drop down menu. Once we do this, you'll be able to see the texture applied. And we can control the size of this texture with the size value here. If we set this lower, it's gonna give us smaller patches, which I think will look a bit better. Now, one more thing that we'll do is actually animate this texture. 
as the simulation plays, we're going to have the texture move across the surface of our mesh, which results in a more random organic looking simulation. So what we can do is hit the button on the side to add an A keyframe. We'll jump all the way to frame 200, set the offset up to let's go with 1.5 and then add in another keyframe. Now, one thing to note is that the interpolation between these two keyframes is a bezier curve, which makes the texture start moving very slowly, speed up in the middle and slow down at the end. To fix this, to make it linear, let's select both of these keyframes in the timeline, hit T and then select linear. Now the texture should move around at a constant rate. And that's basically all we need to do for our flow object. Let's go ahead and select our domain next and talk about the resolution divisions. The resolution divisions again is the quality of the simulation. Higher values will produce better looking fire, but again, it's going to take longer to bake. Now, if you have a slower computer, I recommend setting this to like 96, maybe 128. That'll still produce a pretty nice high resolution simulation. But if your computer can handle it, you can go up to 256. Now, another thing I'm going to change is the time scale. I've noticed when using a time scale of one, it kind of looks like the fire is not moving very quickly. So to fix that, let's bring up the time scale just a little bit. Let's go with 1.2. Next, if you want the fire to actually collide with the sides of the domain, you can add those in right here. Uh, I don't really want that, so I'm going to leave them all off, but I will change the adaptive domain. Make sure this box is enabled. What this will do is if we restart the simulation, the domain will actually shrink down to the exact size of our flow object. This in turn makes the baking process a little bit faster because it's not baking the entire space of the domain. It's only baking where the fire is. One thing to note though is the threshold value. If the density of the smoke is lower than this threshold value, the adaptive domain will actually cut it off. This can result in some weird clipping uh, when you actually render the simulation. So what I like to do is just set the threshold down to zero so that there's no clipping. Next up, we're going to turn on dissolve. So it actually dissolves the smoke and fire over time. And for the time value, this is controlled in frames. Let's set that up to 20. Make sure slow is turned on so it's a bit more of a gradual uh, and smoother process. The reaction speed controls the height of the flames. Higher values will produce shorter flames and lower values will actually produce taller flames. Let's set this to 0.6. And that's basically all we need to do. For the end frame down here, I'm gonna set this to 200 and I'm also gonna switch the type over to modular so we can bake it in and then turn on is resumable if I want to stop the bake. Now, another thing that we can do to add more randomness to the simulation is we can add in a wind force field. So let's jump over to the force field and then add in a wind force field. Let's go into front view by pressing one on the number pad, rotate this 90 degrees and place it over on the left. Now, currently the strength of this is way too high. It's gonna make the fire go at almost a 90 degree angle. So let's set the strength all the way down to zero. And the flow I'm also gonna set to zero and the noise amount we're gonna go up to a value of 0.2. Now, one more thing before we bake in our simulation is we're gonna animate this strength value. We're gonna give the strength some noise so it goes up and down, which makes the simulation look even more random. How this works is we first need to add in a keyframe by hitting the button on the side. And if we split this view by coming up to the top corner, clicking and dragging, we can switch this over to the graph editor. With the strength setting on the left selected, we can jump over to the modifier tab, click add modifier, and then add noise. And here we can see what this is doing. If we drag up a little bit, you're going to notice that the value over here is changing constantly. Now this noise is too much, so let's play around with the scale value. Let's set this up to 15. The strength of this will go down to 0.1. And then also I want to make sure that the strength doesn't go in the negative direction. And we can do this by adding in another modifier, selecting limits, then checking the minimum Y value. And this will clip all of the keyframes that are underneath. So now it's only going to have positive values. And there we go. That's all we really need to do. So now we can bake this in. Make sure you save your project before you do this, just in case Blender crashes. And once you've done that, click on bake. So next up, we need to create the material for our fire. To do this, let's first set the end frame to 200 to match the simulation end frame, just like that. And then let's come up to the top here and split this view once again and switch it over to the shader editor. 
If we press N, we can close off that panel. And here is our basic material. It's using the principled volume shader, and this was added when we did the quick smoke effect. Right now, if we press Z and go into the render preview, you're not gonna really see much of anything. You might see a little bit of smoke, but there is no fire. And that's because we need to actually add that in. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. One of the ways is using the black body intensity. If we set this up to a value of five, you should be able to see some fire in the scene. But I've noticed using the black body intensity, it doesn't give us a lot of control over the color and the strength of it. So instead, we're gonna leave the black body at zero and we're gonna add that fire in manually. Let's press Shift A and in the search, we'll type in volume info node. We'll place that over here. We're gonna be taking the flame attribute and plugging this into the emission strength over in the principled volume. Once we do this, you can see that now we have a little bit of fire, but it's completely white. And the color is controlled by this color output. First though, let's increase the brightness of this. If we press Shift A, we can add in a math node. We'll place that right here and switch the type over to multiply. Now, this bottom value controls the strength of it. If we go up to, let's say like 50, for example, we're gonna get a very bright looking flame. Now, right now you can see it's still very pixelated. And the reason for this is if we jump over to the EV render settings, we need to open up the volumetrics tab. Here is where we can change how the volumes look. One of the biggest ways to increase the quality and detail of your fire is by changing the tile size. At eight pixels, it's gonna really blur out all of the detail. But if we switch it down to two pixels, we should get a lot more detail in the fire, as you can see there. Now, before we do anything else, let's set up the camera and lighting to see this a bit better. I'm gonna go into front view by hitting one on the number pad. And then if we hit control, alt, numpad, zero, that's gonna snap the camera to wherever we're looking. Then if we select it, we can press G, middle mouse button, drag it backwards, and place it somewhere around here. Over in the output tab, I'm gonna set the X resolution to 1080, so we have a square footage just like this. And then I'll just drag it up somewhere around here so we're looking directly at the simulation. Now if we go into rendered view, we can see the fire a bit more. Let's jump over to the world settings and set the color of this all the way down to black. And now we can actually see the fire a bit better but it still doesn't look that great. Now, one of the main reasons for that is the start and end frames right here. The start and end frames right here control the volume in Eevee and when it's gonna be rendered. And how it works is it breaks it up into different slices. And the number of slices is based on the sample count. So what this means is that 64 slices or 64 samples is gonna be spread over 100 meters. Now, we don't need this. We don't need 100 meters of rendered volume. We only need the section that's inside this box. So what we need to do is set the start frame up a little bit until the fire slightly disappears right about there. So it's around five meters. So let's go down a little bit. Let's go to four. And then for the end frame, let's go up to eight. So now what's happening is it's taking those 64 samples and pushing them together over four meters instead of 100 meters. That's gonna give us a lot more detail in the fire. Next, we're gonna turn on volumetric shadows and now let's add in some color to the fire. I'm gonna press Shift A, add in a color ramp right here in converter color ramp. We'll take the flame attribute, plug it into the color ramp, and then the color is gonna go into the emission color. I'll add in a new handle. We'll drag it over to the left here and this is going to be kind of a reddish color, somewhere around here. Then for the white handle, we're going to change this over to more of a yellow, somewhere around here will look pretty good. And then finally, I'm gonna add in one more handle. This is gonna go into the middle between these two handles, and this is just gonna be a black handle. So basically what's happening is that this black handle is going to control the middle of the flames. So it's going to be very strong on the beginning here. It's gonna be less in the middle and then strong right at the end. So it's gonna give us this cool detail effect inside the flames. Now you might notice that our fire still doesn't look that great. And the main reason for that is over in the color management tab, we're using the AGX uh, view transform. Now I've noticed that this transform actually dulls the colors of our fire. So let's switch it over to the filmic mode. And then for the look, let's go high contrast. Now the colors are gonna pop a lot more. From here, you can play around with the colors even more if you want more saturation in the flames. I might drag these 
up just a little bit, something like this. After playing around with the color ramp and the strength, here is what I've settled for the simulation. I've set the black a little bit more to the right, I made the orange a bit more saturated, and then I set the multiply value to around 40. And that's giving us this look for the fire, which I think looks pretty good. If you want to be able to see the smoke in your scene, what you can do is take the, take the lamp right here, drag it down, drag it a little bit closer to the fire, and then with the domain selected, we can set the density up to around 10 or so. And now we should be able to see the smoke a bit better, as you can see there. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you zoom in, you will lose the fire. As you can see, I'm crossing this four meter mark. My viewport is closer than four meters, so it's clipping off that fire. So make sure if you're animating the camera that the start and end frames are in the correct values for the fire to actually be rendered. And one last thing before we render is this flow object. I don't want this to show up in the render. So over on the right side in the outliner, I'm just going to turn it off in the render by clicking the camera icon. And that's basically all we need to do. From here, we can jump over to the output tab, set an output by clicking that button and changing the file format to a movie file of your choice and then render it out. But there we go, guys. That is how you create a basic fire simulation in Eevee. Thank you very much for watching, and if you learned something cool, I would love to see what you did, so make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. Make sure to subscribe because in the next tutorial, we'll be covering the rigid body simulation.